Can a single pill like rapamycin turn on autophagy? Billionaire biohacker Brian Johnson took it daily for five years. Then he pumped the brakes, saying he believes that it shaved years off of his life instead of extending it. So what's real? Let's investigate three supplements with the biggest promise to boost longevity and kickstart autophagy. Here's the elevator pitch for autophagy. It's that cellular cleanup process where your body hunts down and destroys those weak or zombie cells and recycles the old damaged proteins. Autophagy surges when your metabolism gets a workout, usually by fasting. The longevity community seeks autophagy like it's the fountain of youth. And they're right, it is. It reverses aging and it fights diseases that happen as we age. This all kind of makes sense when you pull back and look at the bigger picture. All aging diseases attack your metabolism. And the antidote to a pathetic metabolism is to rev it, stress it back into shape. The most common culprit linking all these diseases is a body drowning in too much insulin. Type 2 diabetes gets crowned the king of metabolic diseases with decades of too much insulin. But high insulin also causes heart disease, Alzheimer's, cancer, even dying of influenza is magnified with high insulin. You want a life without these problems? Find autophagy over and over and over again. A few drugs claim to kickstart autophagy, and the best known one is metformin. I prescribe this drug for my diabetics who need help controlling their blood sugar. If a patient's fasting blood sugar soars north of 100, metformin steps in if diet can't control it. It's cheap, safe, and millions of people use this prescription. The truth about metformin is it works by slightly crippling the power inside the mitochondria. This depleted energy activates AMPK. AMPK is the master sensor of energy found inside your cell. And depending on the amount of energy fueling the cell, AMPK can either command the cell to grow when there's abundant energy around, or it can recycle resources when there's a scarcity of fuel. In fact, fasting, exercise and metformin all drain energy from the body and therefore trigger that AMPK to do what it does when energy is low. That's recycle or autophagy. When AMPK is sensing a bunch of abundant energy, it tells the cells to grow by way of mTOR. Now mTOR signals the cell to divide and grow. And this is exactly what your teenager needs when they're in a growth spurt, lots of mTOR. As adults, when we push mTOR to grow our bodies, it isn't always good. Chronic abundance of nutrients means we grow fatter, cancer, and chronic inflammation. Autophagy orders the cleanup crew, but only if energy is depleted. And your body always teeters between growth and repair. And AMPK is listening to the body. Are there resources to grow? If so, signal the growth by way of mTOR, which stops autophagy. If you suppress the growth by way of suppressing mTOR, then autophagy wins. When I prescribe metformin because the patient has high blood sugar, it lowers their blood sugar by stuffing glucose into the cell while crippling their mitochondria. And that situation boosts that patient's autophagy. But there is a hot mess going on inside that cell. Let's hope that's not you. The question is, does metformin boost autophagy by simply popping a pill when your blood sugars are not elevated? Our current understanding of metformin says taking metformin cripples the mitochondria just a little and then tickles that AMPK to think that the resources are depleted, which then activates autophagy. So if you trick your body into thinking resources are low, does it make for a better life? Well, the lack of definitive human studies showing metformin as a longevity booster has us all guessing, but I vote no. People like billionaire Brian Johnson take metformin in hopes to live longer, but my brain says danger. Again, one more time, metformin lowers the blood sugar by decreasing the efficiency of the mitochondria in your liver, crippling the motor of your cell. By kneecapping your mitochondria, it burns more glucose for a lesser power output. As a result, it pushes each cell to make more and more mitochondria, all functioning at partial power. This is great when your blood sugar is too high, but why have all this extra mitochondria hanging around if you never get to use them at full throttle? The answer is not known until the next round of human trials come out. And in the meantime, I don't prescribe it for longevity, but I respect that patient's choice for those people trying it.
And please do not write in the comments about berberine. This molecule I've covered in the past, it's the over-the-counter, wimpier version of metformin, so the answer is going to be the same, probably weaker. Next is an up-and-coming molecule called spermidine. We can get it from eating things like mushrooms or aged cheese or even soy, but the supplements pack a potent dose that food alone can't deliver on. Spermidine activates the AMPK slightly, but the primary mechanism for autophagy is different. You see, there's an enzyme that switches autophagy on and off. Spermidine promotes autophagy by blocking the enzyme that turns off autophagy. Animal and single cell studies look exciting, showing the mitochondrial rejuvenation in heart cells and the reversal of cell aging. Two studies in humans show the cardioprotection and a boost in cognition, but sadly, they did not measure the markers for autophagy. But they did determine that it is safe and that the side effects are minimal. Similar to metformin, some patients complain about GI bloating or discomfort, and you won't pay as little as you do for metformin, but it is affordable with about a $15 to $40 a bottle price. But the research on spermidine falls far behind metformin. Like metformin, this doesn't interest me much to gamble on it, but if a patient wanted to take it, I wouldn't object, but I wouldn't push folks to take it either. And now the big one, is rapamycin canceled? As the drug with the most powerful autophagy promise, the stakes are high. Rapamycin started out as an antifungal drug many years ago, and nowadays doctors prescribe it specifically for some types of cancer or in organ transplant patients. Rapamycin works directly on mTOR. Yeah, it leaves out AMPK. Let's go back to our teeter-totter. mTOR signals your cells to divide and grow, like that rapidly growing teenager. After transplanting somebody else's kidney or liver into your body, the fastest way to die is when your body's immune system attacks that organ and grows tissue in and around that transplanted organ. Rapamycin suppresses that. It stops the growth. This is autophagy. Rapamycin skips that AMPK altogether and drops an anvil on the mTOR, stopping it completely. Those organ transplant patients, when we dose the rapamycin too high, their gums bleed. Yeah, the tissue in their mouth that is supposed to divide every day and keep the teeth in their head, the growth is suppressed by that rapamycin so much that the skin in their mouth gets holes in it and they bleed. So then we decrease the dose a little. The controversy hangs on the side effects and if it actually makes your life shorter. Our superstar billionaire Brian Johnson takes metformin every day, but calls rapamycin poison. He noticed that his heart rate and other biomarkers worsened when taking rapamycin. And he has a staff of people studying himself and what's happening to him. Some of his side effects were previously unheard of in the history of studying rapamycin. And it's likely that the drug interacted with the hundred other supplements he takes. But what about you? Are the side effects too much of a risk? Peter Atia, someone I do respect, takes it. He uses the side effects of bleeding gum ulcers to know when he might be dosing it too high. Yeah, this tells me that we are messing around with a potent pharmaceutical. This list highlights the most common side effects, but importantly, side effects are seen in cancer and organ transplant patients. That's where we have the most data. And this is usually combined with other immunosuppressants. So the longevity dose side effects are minimal by comparison, but the jury continues to deliberate. Unlike those other two drugs, this one is not as easy to get. It costs between five and $600 a month, and good luck getting your doctor to write it for longevity. Just like the other two on this list, we can't prove that rapamycin prolongs human life, and I am really careful not to use single cell studies in a lab to recommend something to my patients. You have a gut that is 30 feet long, filled with a biochemical obstacle course of rapidly dividing cells with like a hundred trillion referees. And this drug is about to suppress all that. I'd be careful. I don't love taking pills for autophagy. Experimenting suits biohackers who do their research and know what they're doing. But just because Brian Johnson or Peter Atia take a drug doesn't mean that you should. Learn the pros and the cons and search for human studies. And remember that we are only guessing on a pill that claims to boost autophagy. I've done plenty of experimenting on myself, and I don't guess about autophagy when I fast. 
I know it works. The mechanism fasting uses to trigger autophagy is slower, taking weeks to months when compared to those meds, which take minutes to hours. The meds manipulate AMPK, tricking the cell into thinking that there's lower energy or that the energy is depleted. Fasting depletes the energy and also triggers the NAD cascade, fighting oxidative stress. I track my autophagy as I go. True autophagy markers are only measured in a research lab. So if you want the best way to calculate it at home, well, learn how long to fast for autophagy by clicking here. I'll see you there.